So, uh, future Destry here, little update. My resolution for the new year was that I was going to upload a new video to YouTube every Monday. I was going to alternate between development logs about a game that I wanted to turn into a reality, uh, which is what I uploaded last week, and bite-sized tutorials about game development, which is what you're watching right now. I expected that when I would upload my first video, I would get, I don't know, 10, maybe a dozen views, mostly from my friends. <laughs> what I did not expect was to get dozens of views, hundreds of views, thous thousands over nine. It's over 9,000. <laughs> 9,000? There's no way that can be right! It can't! I, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why it's happening. I, I, do, I do know that if you like what I'm doing so far, you're going to love what I'm going to try and do for you next. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I want to thank you in the best way that I possibly can. And I really do think that at this point, the best way for me to thank all of you is to just make the best damn game I can. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. The plan was to alternate between devlogs and tutorials, and I'm going to stick to that plan at least for the next couple of videos. Please, please use that time to let me know in the comments how you feel about the alternating format. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is there something else you'd like instead? Tell me down below while I try and figure out what's going on and try to get as excited as I am, because you and I are going to make this into an incredible adventure. Let's do it. Good morning and welcome to 8-Bit Tips, the off-weekly show where instead of a devlog, I teach you everything I've learned about game development over the years. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at polymodeling, uh, and specifically one simple trick that you can use to instantly improve your polymodeling skills. Watcha! Uh, polymodeling is one of those things that comes up every so often. Uh, whether it's retopologizing a complex model or making like a simple prop that doesn't really merit sculpting, whatever it is, it's something that as long as you know this simple trick, it'll make whenever it does come up much, much easier and it'll be a real lifesaver here. So first, let's take a look at someone who does not know said simple trick, uh, which is the person who started modeling this fire hydrant here, right? And as a beginning modeler, uh, everything in theory has been going really, really well. We've been modeling with quads. Got our edge loops here. This is fantastic. We even put in bevels so we don't have any sharp edges. This is awesome. All that's left to do is we have to come up here and we have to seal off this little hole at the top and then boom, our model is done. The problem is that the person who's working on this is going to have an unnecessarily difficult, if not impossible time trying to seal off this simple little hole at the top of the fire hydrant. And the reason for it is because even though we've been really, really diligent in making sure that we've got edge loops that go around the model, the problem is that we don't really have any edge loops that go across the model. And I can show you that in practice here. So I've selected these two things, which in theory on opposite sides of each other. Uh, and in theory, you can look at this and go, oh, well, everything's fine here. All of the vertices are in line with each other. I don't see anything sticking out and that's fine. The problem is that if we look at this thin vertical blue line here, even though the vertices are aligned with each other, the problem is that the vertices aren't actually aligned or mirrored across any world or object axis. And that becomes even more apparent if we select this set of vertices here. You can see we've got this green line and it's perpendicular here, nice and squared off. But the problem is it doesn't have any sort of matching tiles over here, no, no matching vertices. So if I select this one and then go into front view, you, you can see, oh man, this is a mess, this is all misaligned. Even though I have one that is mirrored across the world axis, it's all, this is not good. This is gonna be impossible because when you come up here, if we start, we can go, okay, I'll pull that out and I'll make this into a face and maybe I'll make that into a face as well. And then if I pull this and I'm not gonna have any matching vertices on the other side, nothing is going to align with itself. It's going to be a headache and a nightmare. And at the end of the day, all you're really gonna be able to do is select all of these, merge them in the center and call it quits, uh, which is not ideal. We want to avoid this whenever we can. 
So then, what is the simple trick that lets us avoid that entire thing in general? Well, the answer is really simple. All you got to do is whenever you've got an edge loop, I've got one right here, uh, try to make sure that it is divisible by the number eight. And that's the whole trick. Whenever you have an edge loop that's divisible by the number eight, you're always going to have these vertices sort of on the uh, orthogonal directions here, and then these vertices on the 45s. And what that lets you do is, I'm going to take this one vertex here on the side, I'm going to pull it out, and then I've got one, two, three, four vertices, which is a quad, and I can do that the entire way around my model here. It's super awesome. All of my edge flow is maintained both vertically and horizontally across my model. And this is super nifty. This is great. You can do this no matter how many vertices are in your model. Again, as long as, as, long as it's divisible by the number eight. There's a slightly more complex ring, but you can do the exact same thing. This uh, edge loop happens to have 24 vertices. You can see that selected over here. And again, I've got these on the orthogonal directions here and then these on the 45s. Uh, so I'm going to basically take every one of these vertices except the ones at the 45 degree angles here. I'm going to pull them out just a bit and flatten them so they're in line here. And I'm going to pull them so that they're in line with the vertex just past the 45 degree here. And I'm going to keep pulling out sets of vertices in line vertically here with these additional faces and I'm going to go all the way across until I get to uh, the next 45 and then I'm going to stop. What that does is it creates this grid in the center of your edge loop and the nice part is again on this 45 I've got one, two, three, four vertices. I can seal that off with a face and I can go right along. I can go face, 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 <gasps> Face, 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 face. And you can do this again, no matter how many vertices, as long as it's divisible by eight. You can see my edge flow extends all the way across this way, all the way across this way. Everything is nice and neat, super awesome. And if you model with this mentality of having eights in your model, edge loops comprised of eight vertices uh, in your model, wherever you can, everything is just gonna be much easier to work with as you move along. You're always going to be able to seal off holes, make connections, and do basically whatever it is you need to do. So as a practical example, here is a hand that I was working on earlier. I've got a finger here. And oh no, I've hit the end of my finger and I need to seal this off and create the fingertip. But luckily, because I've been smart and much better than when I was modeling the fire hydrant, uh, this is going to be really, really easy to do. I know all I need to do is take this one vertice, pull it over, and bam, I'm already set. I can take that, seal it off. Boop, seal, do, boom. A uh, little bit of adjustment here, like such. And now I've got a nice, neat tip to my finger. Everything is taken care of. I didn't even have to think about it. I just could do it, which is awesome when topology just works. Except, oh no, I've got this new problem, which is that now I've spent all this time modeling this finger, and now I need to attach it to the rest of my hand. But again, because I have this mentality of modeling with eights, it's already all taken care of. The base of my finger here has eight vertices. The connection point, again, because I was thinking ahead and in eights, also has eight vertices. So all I need to do is bridge this one gap here and then everything else just works. I've got edge flow across the top of my hand, down the length of my finger, underneath, and then through my palm. I've got the edge flow all the way around the base of my finger here, so it comes across, and that would go across each of these fingers over here. And then, of course, the edge loops that go around my finger here. Everything just works. Everything just connects, and I don't really have to think about it. There's no extra effort involved. It just sort of happens because I took care of myself earlier and made sure that my edge loops are divisible by eight. Uh, sometimes you'll have to add quads or, or triangles in order to make it work, but if you can do it, it'll really, really, really help your ability to just make the edge flow throughout your model much more coherent and smooth. Anywho, Give it a try, tell me how it goes. I'm gonna hop back to work and I will see you in the next devlog. Oh, one more thing. Uh, for my patrons, thank you again. You guys are making this whole process infinitely easier for me. Uh, your benefits will be kicking in over the next week. For everyone else, uh, there's a Google Drive link down below where you can download an old version of the game for free. Uh, for anyone who wants to join in on the adventure, subscribing on YouTube is the best place to do it. I'm getting back to work for real. I'll see you in the next one, and thank you again.